the film that stirred the Muslim world, at least 30 dead, including a U.S. ambassador. How should Muslims respond to be insulted? And what will be the implications of these events on the Arab Spring? Hello and welcome to The World This Week with me, Phil Rees. Well, the row continues to simmer. Demonstrations are expected throughout the Muslim world and beyond tomorrow after Juma prayers. France will close its embassies and schools in 20 countries after a satirical magazine in Paris publishes cartoons of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, some of which depict him naked. Well, we will be dedicating the whole of today's program to this controversy. For those of you who haven't seen clips of the film on YouTube, Innocence of Muslims is a crude piece of propaganda directed against Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It describes him as a thug and a womanizer and is clearly a deliberate attempt to shock, offend and provoke Muslims. The filmmaker is believed to be a 55-year-old Egyptian Coptic Christian living in Southern California. He's also a fraudster who was sentenced to 21 months in prison in the US two years ago. Well, the film was later dubbed into Arabic and came to wider attention in the Islamic world after Sheikh Khalid Abdullah, an Egyptian cleric popular with Salafists, played clips from it on his show. Well, European states, with their restrictions on freedom of speech, including laws against Holocaust denial and other prohibitions of hatred, would probably find a way to ban the film and arrest the filmmakers. But in the United States, the Constitution preserves a blanket right to freedom of speech, no matter how hateful the content of that speech. Well, before we discuss these matters, here's Emily Churchill with a roundup of developments. In a matter of hours, the US Embassy in Libya was ruined and up to 14 lives lost. My name is Chris Stevens and I'm the new US Ambassador to Libya. Among them, American Ambassador Chris Stevens, who died from smoke inhalation after rockets were fired at the embassy on September the 11th last week. The attacks happened during protests against the innocence of Muslims, a low-budget American film spread on YouTube that mocks the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Whether the assault on the embassy was in reaction to the film or whether it was in fact pre-planned remains to be seen. On the same day in Egypt, thousands gathered in protest outside the US embassy in Cairo, some even scaling the wall and pulling down the American flag to replace it with an Islamic banner. But the protests in Libya and Egypt were just the beginning. Demonstrations against the 15-minute clip, which portrays Mohammed, peace be upon him, as an idiot and a paedophile, spread around the globe this week, from the Muslim-majority world to the heart of Europe. Protesters in Lebanon were joined by Hezbollah leader Nasrullah, who made a rare public appearance at the demonstration in Beirut after a televised speech in which he called for protests against the offensive clip. Most demonstrations have passed peacefully, some have not. Here in Sydney, Australia, 12 people were injured, among them six police officers, after over a thousand people took to the streets in protest. At least 30 people have been killed in the global unrest, including in Pakistan, Yemen and Tunisia. In Kabul in Afghanistan, 12 people were killed in a car bomb this Tuesday when a minibus carrying mainly foreign workers was hit by a car full of explosives. Hizbah Islami, who claimed responsibility for the attack, says it was acting in retaliation for the film. Leading Islamic scholars have condemned the violence, including Sheikh Yusuf al karadawi head of the International Union of Muslim Scholars, who said Muslims should respond to the film by explaining to humanity how tolerant Islam is. Governments around the world have spoken out against the film, with the White House calling it reprehensible and disgusting. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has condemned both the film and the violent reactions to it. In Libya and elsewhere in recent days, we have seen terrible attacks and unrest. There is no justification for such a killing and brutality. A hateful, disgusting film appears to have sparked the violence. It is shameful to exploit the fundamental right to free 
expression by deliberately provoking bigotry and bloodshed. YouTube has blocked access to the anti-Islam film in Saudi Arabia, Libya, Egypt, Indonesia and India, saying it is complying with local laws. In others, such as Pakistan, the government has put a freeze on the entire YouTube site until access to the clip is blocked. Emily Churchill with that report. Well, I'm very pleased to have in the studio Seamus Milne, the associate editor and columnist on The Guardian. We also have the imam and broadcaster Ajmal Masrur. On the phone we have Sheikh Paul Sakrani, the former Secretary General of the Muslim Council of Britain, Rabbi Herschel Gluck, the Chairman of the Muslim Jewish Forum, and Sajjad Karim, Conservative MEP. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, Sajjad Karim, let's start with you. Um, you've had a statement today at the European Parliament. Um, what's the Conservative Party reaction to these events? Well, I issued uh, a statement um, from the Parliament yesterday, making it uh, firstly abundantly clear that uh, on a personal level, uh, and this is a feeling that is certainly shared amongst colleagues of all political persuasions from right across Europe that I've, I have had discussions with, that this is a deeply insulting film that actually has no value whatsoever. The only purpose that it is serving is to create uh, a, a position of hurt and indeed uh, the sort of reaction that we are seeing and it's a very understandable reaction in many ways. Yeah, but should something be done about it then? Should, should it be stopped then? Well, in the first instance, I think it's important to firstly recognize that uh, the international community has responded in a way firstly to distance in, term of, in terms of governments to distance themselves from this particular piece of work. It has been described as reprehensible. Um, so that's uh, an encouraging movement in the right direction. Uh, YouTube, I understand, uh, has blocked access to this in various parts, but within Europe it is still accessible, so anybody who wants to see the film can still go on and see the film. Uh, and of course there the justification that is provided is that we're here trying to create a balance between uh, the filmmaker's right and freedom of expression as compared to that of religious sensitivities and how people may react. From a personal perspective, I believe the filmmakers have absolutely no right to put out messages that are so intolerant and spread hate in the way that they are doing. So do you think, just finally, do you think if this filmmaker was in Britain, he could be um, basically picked up on uh, incitement, uh, religious racial hatred charges or whatever? I think there's a very strong case for the police to carry out an investigation had such a film been produced in the United Kingdom without a shadow of a doubt. Okay, Sajid Karim, thank you very much for joining us. I hope to thank talk you. to you again. Um, I mean, did, did you think, Seamus Milne, um, that perhaps non-Muslims in Britain, when they talk about freedom of speech, you've seen many articles in other newspapers, certainly not The Guardian, but, you know, talking about the right for freedom of speech. Do you think they understand the sensitivities um, that Muslims hold when the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he is the subject of an insult? No, I think that's a big problem. I, I think that, that it's not understood outside the Muslim community uh, that, you know, insulting, uh, ridiculing, humiliating uh, articles or, or films in this case uh, about Prophet Muhammad uh, are seen by many Muslims as an attack on their identity, on one of the pillars of Islam, and are effectively a form of hate speech. Um, no, I don't think that's understood. I think people uh, are confused about it because they, many people in this country and uh, other non-Muslim countries feel that that this is an argument about a set of ideas, a religion, which is, and they, I think they miss the, the fact that it's seen so much by many Muslims as, as I said, an issue of their identity, but also it's a proxy for race hatred, as we've seen in this country, uh, in the way that groups like the English Defence League and uh, the British National Party have targeted Muslims and used Islamophobia in a way that they would previously have used much uh, more direct forms of racism. And so I think, you know, there is an educational um, discussion that's needed on both sides to for people to understand that, you know, these kind of, it's not just an attack on the, or a criticism of the of the Prophet Muhammad, it's a, it's an attempt to ridicule, sexualize, humiliate, um, that that's a form of Islamophobia and aggressive 
uh, hate Islamophobia in a way that people would recognise, I think, much more in the case of, say, anti-Semitism or Yeah, because there wouldn't be such a film made or, you know, about anti-Semitism without an absolute uproar from all sides of, of, of British community. And rightly so. And, uh, but, I, I mean, you know, one of the problems is on the internet, you know, these things are very difficult to deal with. Um, and, you know, all sorts of horrific things can be found all over the internet. And one of the, I think, one of the oddities for... Um, many non-Muslims is they're thinking, how come this rather obscure, uh, you know, video trailer, um, which appears from um, a, a fundamentalist evangelical Christian Coptic um, groupie school, um, somehow caused this huge uproar in the Muslim world? And I think that's also not only because they they don't see very clearly the the nature of the insult and the abuse. Um, as it's seen by Muslims, but also they don't see the context very clearly of how that's seen in the Muslim world and the Arab world in particular and its association with the United States and the West. OK, well, we'll come to that perhaps a bit later. Sirkval Sakrani, if I could come to you now. I mean, obviously you're involved um, in protests against um, Salman Rushdie um, some time ago now, some uh, many, many years back. Um, do you think that British society has learnt anything since those days in the late 80s, early 90s? Yes, I mean, it's been 20 years, more than 20 years ago, when this, um, uh, the Slavic Verses was published. Um, I think uh, at that time, of course, the, the reaction uh, from the, 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 the general public and, of course, from the establishment and, uh, um, and, 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 the, and the countries around the world was simply uh, to say, what's all this fuss about? Uh, and they simply ignored uh, the pleas for understanding that here it's not an issue of uh, freedom of expression, but whether, you know, uh, is there such thing as freedom of ex uh, expression in its absolute sense? Um, and, of course, that only exists in a state of anarchy. Um, but over the years, I mean, we have seen further uh, attacks and this vile actions have been carried out, whether it's the publication of the cartoons or the burning of the book, uh, burning of the Quran. Um, and we see that there has been, I think, I can see a greater understanding now uh, to the extent that t today when this sort of <coughs> film has been um, uh, released uh, or sort of appearing as a trailer, uh, there is more or less a clear condemnation across um, the international sort of uh, community. Uh, the countries, the US, we heard the UN Secretary General uh, expre expressing his, his, his deep concern and annoyance at this. Um, we see the political parties now expressing their view. So I think over the years they really understand that it's not just simply the reaction of a faith community, in this case Muslims, against um, uh, something that is very central to their faith. Um, and this act of sacrilege or the act of blasphemy has to be dealt with. Mm. And that is a real issue now. How do we deal with this issue? Because it's not going to stop. It's occurred in the last few years. I think we'll see more of it in the future. Um, and sadly, there are elements who are simply mischievous and are there to provoke. Uh, it's it's, it's a, in a society where we feel the communities are trying to work together and they don't see it as a, as a, as a, as a good goal uh, for the peaceful society to exist. Mm. They see this important development okay. taking place in the Middle East and around the world, uh, which are uh, in a positive line, which they don't see it as, 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 as a positive development. Uh, and these elements will uh, create this mischief and, and, and uh, bring about something which will uh, be very emotive and there will be elements in the community who will react um, unwisely, as we okay. have seen in some cases. All right, Sir Iqbal, but I mean, um, you know, let's, let's turn now, I mean, to um, Ajmal um, Masro. You have actually written, I mean, I can I quote you um, from your Facebook comments that said Muslims need um, to take a joke better. Now, um, I mean, I don't want to just take that out of context, of course, but do you do feel that there is too much sensitivity, is that right, about what, after all, is a film made by perhaps someone fairly unhinged in Southern California? I didn't say that. That, I, that was not my quote. My quote was that Muslims, Muslim reaction is what I'm more concerned about. The film is grotesque, it's silly, it's amateurish. It doesn't even worth any moment of our attention. It's so bad. Response has been disproportionate. Wasn't the prophet mocked? belittled, derided? Wasn't the prophet called names every day of his life as he walked the earth? What did he do in return? Did he demonstrate? Did he call his companions to come out to protect his honor? Did he do anything about his own personal honor and dignity when people were calling him all sorts of names? The answer is no. Prophet did not derail the mission. The mission was to spread compassion, 
morality, godliness in this world, not his person. Now he's gone. There are many people who will have many things to say about the prophet. They can criticize him all they want. That's not a problem. More than a billion people love him, revere him today. These films, these cartoons won't reduce an iota of his honor and self-esteem. The problem is, in my view, is Muslim response disproportionate, killing of ambassadors, losing life in that process, burning and looting your own property of people who are innocent have not been involved in the filmmaking. But why so, do you think this is, sir? Why do you think this sensitivity yeah, so, is there? I, I think it's because there is a superficial reverence of the Prophet amongst the Muslims today. When I say superficial, deep down, Prophet is a hallmark of mercy and compassion. If we are true to the Prophet, and the Islamic message is a message of intelligence, intellect, and proportionate response. A Muslim community who is marred by political upheaval, despotism, poverty, all sorts of social and political ills. When you see their response, you can understand why they're responding in that violent manner. Of course, not justifiably. But given them and giving them a particular condition, which is a normal condition, a response of proportion. So a man has made a stupid film. God says in the Quran, idva billatihi ahsan, and give them back something that is better, so that your enemy may consider you as your friend. So, as a Muslim, as a person who loves the Prophet dearly, I would say protesting in this ungodly, unethical manner, in this violent manner, is not what we are expected. Mm. What God wants us to do is live a good, decent life, and protect our honor, and present Islam, that would be the most honorable thing to do about the Prophet. So I'm interested in the Muslim response, while of course clearly condemning the making of the film. Okay, I mean, Rabbi, look, let me bring you in here. I mean, where do you fall on this? I mean, do you understand the fact that some people probably maybe go over the top, as it were? I mean, obviously, the, the killing of the ambassador in Tripoli, but that this kind of anger um, is, is, is understandably hard to control once something so insulting is produced. Of course, I condemn uh, the murder and the violence in the strongest possible terms. At the same time, I deeply understand the anger, the resentment, uh, the sentiments that have been expressed about the film. Um, it just imagine if someone would, would make a film like that about one's mother or about one's father, what type of deep pain it would cause to each and every one of us. And uh, So if it was made about Judaism, for example, if there was a similar type of film made about David, Solomon made about, obviously, the heroes or at least, you know, the, the important figures of the Torah, do you, do you, would you understand a similar reaction? I, I would understand people expressing very deep hurt and pain. Uh, we wouldn't go around killing people or, or destroying things, but at the same time, we would certainly express very clearly our deep hurt at something like this uh, coming about. Well, do you think that the, there's a sort of the secular, you know, religiosity has obviously increased in the last 30 years in, in many, many countries. Um, do you see a kind of a, a rise in, 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 in religious values um, in, in, in the Middle East and, and around the world, uh, whereby the rise of Judaism, Christianity in the United States, of course, and Islam, um, is creating an increasing divide or at least a, a lack of understanding by those secularists? I think the most people, uh, most thinking people, are very pleased that so many people have chosen to live a better life. Uh, sadly, there is a small uh, percentage of people who are fundamentally secularist, who have an agenda to, uh, to provoke, to attack religious people. And they sadly are causing the the present upheavals that we are witnessing. Okay, I, I know. I, must, I mean, would you agree with that? That there are these sort of fundamentalist secularists. Yeah, I call them secular fundamentalists. They exist in they exist in all spheres of life. They have a hell bent agenda, and that is to ensure they silence the voice of religion from every discourse. They are hell bent on ensuring, especially in the modern world, Islam has no say or place in any of the public discourse. I think that's the problem. 
and I'm predicting 21st to 22nd century conflict to be a conflict between religion and secularism rather than between religions. I think Christianity and Islam and Judaism would find a lot of common ground and reconcile a lot of differences. But what we'll see is a violent reaction from the secularist. They may even pick up arms, and I was actually told this by an MEP when I was visiting Brussels who said, he's from Netherlands, he said, if given a chance, we, the secularist, may pick up a machine gun and if we're looking for an enemy, and it may be you, the religious people. Well, and that really shocked me. So the growth of secular terrorism. I mean, uh, let me bring you in, Sir Iqbal Sakrani, there. I mean, you did actually mention, I think, during um, the Satanic Verses row, that death perhaps is um, a bit too easy for him. Um, I mean, where would you put this row compared to that one? I mean, in terms of the scale of it and the importance of it. I think Satanic Verses was one uh, starting point where there was a very clear license, I think, at that time given by the number, by the, by the, by the governments or by the legislation that was in place at that time, uh, that it is perfectly normal uh, to vilify, uh, to commit acts of sacrilege. Um, and this was the time when I think the lacuna in law was identified that in a, in a civilized society, um, it's perfectly acceptable uh, to, to commit act of sacrilege. Yes, we had a law of blasphemy uh, in the UK, but that again was a protection for the Anglican faith only. Um, and at that time... But what course, about a satirical... I mean, what about something like The Life of Brian by Monty Python, which yeah. satirized the life of... Well, um, Jesus Christ. I mean, what did you think again, of that? I think I think the point is whether it's a satirical, it's it, it, or you're, it's a, a mocking the the, the 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 founders of the faith and people. Should that have been banned? Sorry. Well, I, it's not a question of being banned. I think the point is that of understanding the issue. That is this something that is in line with having a, living in a society which brings in better understanding, a social cohesion, brings peace and all that. I mean, we have laws in the country, uh, we have law of defamation um, uh, that clearly says that it's not permissible, it's illegal to defame an individual. But sadly, we don't have a law uh, that gives protection to, to the, the community at large uh, or for the faith uh, at the moment. Um, okay. And I think this is the, the difficulty which we have, that the legislation is a very powerful medium, a guide to the society in which we live in. Mm -hmm. uh, we are living in a civilized society. There's the issue of respect for people of all faiths. Uh, religion plays a very important role in the lives of many, many um, okay. uh, uh, strong com okay, sorry, communities. We're coming to an end now. I want to just bring in our studio guest before we've got to go. So thank you very much for your contribution. But I mean, just very briefly, I mean, do you, is there any concern that freedom of speech has an argument against some of these things? And, and, and you know, is there a balance that's needed? Yeah, I think it, there is a difficult argument about where, I mean, clearly it's right that people should have the opportunity and the, and the freedom to criticise religion and religions. I don't think, I mean, you know, the, no religion can be exempt from, uh, mm. from criticism that is carried out in a reasoned and uh, a non-inflammatory way. The problem is that this is not about mm. criticism of religion. This is about an assault on people's nature and being. It's an attempt to... You know, it's a, it's, as I was saying earlier, it's a, hate, a form of hate speech which is intended to intimidate people who are vulnerable in society. So that's also a difference okay. between we're talking between Christianity and and uh, Islam and Judaism in this country, for example. I'm so sorry. You know, we've run out of time. I mean, we could talk more about it. And of course, we will because we're coming to a short break. But let me thank all our guests in the first part. In part two, we'll be widening the debate to examine the impact of the film on the Arab Spring and long-term relations between the West and the Muslim world. Stay with us. Thank <laughs> you.